You're listening to Speaking Stellar Girl with Terry Tkachuk, an interview series that inspires women to live their most stellar life. Terry is the co-founder of the Stellar Girl movement, and she is sitting down with women all over the world to hear about the key moments in their lives and how they live boldly, compassionately, and ultimately became a stellar girl. Welcome to Speaking Stellar Girl. I'm your host, Terry Tkachuk, and I'm thrilled to have Camille Walker joining me today. Camille is the blogger behind My Mummy Style with nearly 52,000 followers. She shares all things mummy, including travel, home decor, recipes, budgets, just to name a few of the things she covers. We'll talk more about all of those later. She is also the host of Call Me CEO podcast, and I am so excited to talk to all things that she finds stellar today. Thank you for joining me and welcome Camille. Thank you. It's such a joy to be here. I just wanted to, um, my intro was short. I just kind of gave you, gave our listeners a, a brief bio about you. I would love them to hear more about you and what and how you created this massive following and um, how Mummy Style got started. Awesome. Yeah. I, you know, it's a journey that I'm still right in the middle of and loving. And it, I, what I love about the process of becoming is that it introduces things that you never see happening. So I started out in the mortgage business and was in the business world with a bunch of men. I had actually graduated, graduated in family and consumer science education, but really felt like the traditional classroom wasn't necessarily where I would end up, which I was right. I ended up taking all of those things that I learned to teach, but online. And at the time when I was getting the degree, you know, blogging didn't even exist. And so I started in the business world with a bunch of men doing sales who didn't really believe in this little girl from Utah, you know, and, um, during that process, I really was put to the test of what I believed I was capable of. And also, leadership and sales and really touching into the hearts of who the people were that I was serving and how I could best serve them. And I think that, you know, when I started having children and became a stay at home mom, which was my, my dream, I really wanted to be at home with my kids. I found that I was yearning for something more to keep my brain active and learning because I really, I love the process of learning. I love to teach and I love to learn. And so I gathered women together. We created my mommy style really I mean, it did start as a hobby. I was hoping it could come become something more, a career, but that wasn't necessarily why I why I did it. It was more about creating community, giving women resources when they feel stuck, and then also um, continually learning. So I did that. I've been running that for about nine years, and it is now just me. It went from seven women down to one, okay. and I know which you know those twists and turns. I couldn't have got where I was without those partnerships and those female friends. And now I've launched Call Me CEO, which I found a lot of people asking me for consulting and helping to share their story or their business business or product. And I thought, man, I would love to really get to the heart of who these people are so that I can help broadcast their story and really help them come to life and get a, a, a spotlight on them. And so it's just been the most wonderful journey and new things are opening up that I never saw coming. And I'm just along for the ride. It's been so much fun. I am so happy for you. That is, that's, that's a stellar story. I, I lo absolutely love that. But the, what I, I mean, you mentioned the girls that helped you along the way are, are they inspirations to you? Cause that is what our stellar girl community is all about is about sharing each other's stories. I'm um, championing each other. And so who, who are these women and let me know about them. Yeah. So when it first started, I put together a group of seven women and they consisted of people that were nearest and dearest to my heart. So it was like my college roommate, my best friend growing up, my sister, my cousin, my new best friend neighbor, and one of my friends who at the time um, represented a different category. So not all of us were, seen, not all of us were married and not all of us had kids. And I wanted it that way. It was kind of like the view before the view came along, you know, so yeah. we would take different topics and share on that. And, but it was about six months in of working with the seven of us that there were three of the girls that said, man, this is like a job and we're not getting paid, which was true. We weren't, we weren't making any money. Um, and, and so they, they left and then it came down to be a college roommate, my sister, my cousin and me. So mostly family. And it just whittled down slowly until about two, gosh, it's almost been 
two and a half, three years ago now that it's just been me. And I think that that was really a pivotal point for me because I don't want the story to be just about me. And I think that that's what really led me down the channel of creating my podcast. But I also, in that meantime, built a screen time uh, handbook for parents to help create healthy relationships with screens in their homes with kids. And I also produced my time for us journal for prompt journaling for kids ages two to 12 for parents to do with their kids. And I don't know that I would have found that individual voice had I not been pushed into that place of getting uncomfortable and having this, having to figure out what my story was or what I was going to bring to the world without having my besties next to me. I love that you champion um, all the women around you. That's, that's incredible. And, and I've learned so much from your blog and your um, Instagram as well, from all the tips you share about how to keep your kids busy. You know, you have them outside. I've, I've watched your stories. You take them sledding and all these activities that you do with them and all this quality time that you find being, you know, a CEO of your own podcast and your own life and your own home. Um, but you find that quality time with your kids. And I've learned how to prioritize from you. And for that, I am grateful. So thank you for that. Wow, and that's one you. of my favorite things. Um, I, I hope that all of your followers feel the same way that how you are able to explain like, okay, I have all these kids and I have a job and I have all these things to do, but now what? So your journal um, that you are, or is it for the kids or is it for mom? Yeah. So I created it to be a way for parents because when I, when I launched the screen time program, which was born out of necessity in my own life, I had a child, I have a child who's very sensitive. And I noticed that when he had more screen time, he would lose his temper more frequently and he would feel disconnected and, and kind of go to a place mentally where I didn't know how to save him, so to speak. Uh, I share more about that on my website, but through that process, we took a, a one month screen freeze where we turned off all the screens. We still did a weekly like family move family movie time, mm -hmm. but I just saw him transform and blossom back into the kid that I knew he was. But what was interesting about promoting that product is I feel like it created a lot of guilt and shame around parents and feeling overwhelmed with how to manage screens and feeling overwhelmed with, you know, maybe feeling like they were giving their kids too much screen time or they had it covered. And I thought, how could I, how could I flip the script so that I make it so I give parents a tool to be able to create pur purposeful time with their kids. And so that's why, that's where the journal was born. I actually was a avid journal writer from the age of five on up. I love journaling. And so that's where it was born out. It was more to give uh, parents a tool to connect with their kids away from screens and know what to do for those five to 10 minutes to really create purpose in their day. So it's a prompt journal that includes um, unique questions every day. And there's also a place for them to be creative and to draw and color with their, with their child. So it's meant to be done together, but I do know that some parents, it's like their nightly routine where their kid will answer the questions and then the parent will come in to say good night and they'll show them what they did or, or what they worked on. So it's really aged meant to be for kids ages two to 12. So it's a little younger that it skews, but I feel like 12 and up, there's a lot of options for journals like that. So I yeah. really wanted something for younger kids. So you filled a void. Absolutely. That's good. That's fantastic. There is, um, I wanted to talk to, while we're talking business and, and what you've, you've produced, um, within your own company. Um, I would like to talk to you about your new virtual assistant course that you have debuting. Um, I think this spring. Yes. So I am working avidly right now. You kind of caught me in the middle of um, <laughs> a little bit of chaos because I'm taking all, I have like five different websites that I'm bringing all together under one domain so that okay. people can find me more easily. I'm hoping I'm in, I'm in talk right now with maybe purchasing CamilleWalker.com. If it's not that exactly, it'll be a variation of my name somehow. I'm really wanting to get that one, but I don't know if it's going to happen. Um, but in that, I am hoping to, in the coming months, maybe summer, depending on how long it takes to get it just right, I will be releasing a beta launch of how to become a virtual assistant and your own CEO, because I really want to give women the opportunity who are moms and want to be at home with their babies to be able to work from home on their own schedule 
And I, there are so many options of expertise and needs online right now that it's, the possibilities are endless. So yeah, it's coming and it's going to be good. So I'm taking my time to get it done right now. I'm kind of under construction, getting everything together, but I'm so excited about it. Oh, that's, that's awesome. Oh my gosh. I just, I love, I love that you are constantly like you just started um, call me CEO in January. Now you're going to be starting this virtual assistant and explain to me though, what a beta launch is. Cause I'm not familiar with what that is. Sure. Yeah. So depending on your, on your accent, you may call it beta. I okay. call it beta, Okay. okay. <laughs> but what it is, is it's a soft launch of a program, which means it's a highly discounted rate of what it will be when it comes out, say six months or a year later, once okay. you really iron out kinks. Um, typically for people that are in the beta group, they will find that they get more interaction with me one-on-one -on -one because I will be fine tuning what it is that the questions are that people have. I think for so many years, I've been doing online marketing and, um, creating content and doing all the things right now that sometimes you're too close to it to really pull it back and make it really basic so that people can start from the beginning, which is what I want to do. I want to take people from the beginning and be able to launch their own business in that respect. And so, and, and coach them along the way. Yeah. Yeah. So right now I have five interns and they're kind of my pre beta because I'm helping to coach and train them right now. And then I'll launch my beta that will be like people I don't know, but they pay a very discounted price. And then I'll work with them more on one-on-one -on -one as I refine the course offering. And then hopefully I'm hoping to turn it into a certification so that it's really a process where if people say, yeah, I was CEO virtual assistant certified with Camille, that holds a weight, you know, like I really yes. want it to be done right. So that's fantastic. That's, oh my goodness. You've got a lot going on. So if because you have a lot going on, I'm going to move into self-care. What yeah. are you doing for yourself? What are, what is Camille doing for her so that she can be there for her kids, for your family, for all these people that are in your life at the moment? What do you do for yourself? Yeah, I think self-care is so important. That's such a good question. And it varies so much for different people. For me, I really find a lot of energy that comes from working out. I love to be active nearly every day at least for 30 minutes. And sometimes if I can't get outside or do high fitness, which I love, I'll even do like our virtual um, Oculus, like the VR, Yeah. Oh my <laughs> which it's so I, fun. Oh my, yeah. I've have tried you done it, it too. Yes. I've tried yeah, it. It's yes. a workout. It is. Yeah. I've tried boxing. I, I was scared. I sat on a virtual chair and fell on my behind. <laughs> I, I punched myself in the face and my dad or my husband, not my dad, he has it on video and thinks it's like the funniest thing ever. Perfect. So yeah, I love working out. I love getting outside. I really love to journal and I'm trying to get better at that because I feel like once I started blogging, I wasn't journal journaling just for me for a long time. And then I also love massage and chiropractic care and I'm trying better to be better at meditation, but I'm not always great at that. But I just think listening to your gut and really fine tuning. I was actually writing about this this morning where I think sometimes it takes someone on the outside to tell you, you need to slow down. And my husband is that person for me. And okay. sometimes I get upset with him when he tells me I'm like, I'm fine. And he's like, no, like you don't need to put this deadline on your own timeline. Like take your time. And I think that that ap applies to this virtual assistant thing. And even with the podcast, I had the idea last year and I really took my time deciding what I wanted my messaging to be and mm -hmm. who I wanted to be talking to. And so I think it's a lot of self-reflection to really tune in with your body and your mind and then having people in your corner that help you know when to slow down and also support you when you're down. Absolutely. When you um, say it's difficult for you to meditate, I, I, I feel that way um, myself. I started off if just a little bit of teariness. I started off with a three minute song. I found a song that was three or four minutes long and I turned that on in the background and I just closed my eyes and breathed through that one song and I made it through that three to four minutes. And that's how I was able to start. Now, do I do it every day? No. Um, but I find that it helps you just sort of ground yourself a little bit more. And, but I, I mean, exercise, I, I think definitely does it for me too. So I yeah. love that you, I love that you are active with your kids outside and do all the hiking and activities and sledding that I see on your stories. I think it's so fun. <laughs> and you guys are always laughing and having a good time. It's like, I just, I think that's fantastic. So, um, 
I also want to talk because you also talk about fashion in your in my mommy style. You you find that you know that's very still important. That's still important as a mom to to. You just had a birthday. I saw your try ons. Oh so, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. I watch you all the time. You're so nice. <laughs> all the time. So um so happy happy belated birthday. Thank um, you. And um the so you try and close. You are you get you get ready. Do you find that that helps your mood in, in every day, like to get dressed up? Yeah, it's funny because I think there were a lot of years recently where I was nursing or had a new baby where I didn't take time to get dressed or ready. And to be honest, the podcast and doing interviews where I'm on camera more often is what is kind of pushing me to do that because I wouldn't always make that a priority. So I do, I like, I like taking time to get ready and like brush my hair, but I don't take a lot of time. I mean, I think that at the end of the day, I really relish in the alt, like the opposites. I love days where I can just veg out in my PJs and I I love days that I can dress up and be more on, you know, on point, I guess, or on display. (laughs) Um, Where do you see your business? I mean that you have so much going on right now, but how has your business changed, you know, from the pandemic and everything that went down from 2000 and leading into 2021, nothing seems to be quite open as of yet. Um, things are opening up slowly, different regulations in different states and counties and countries. Um, but where do you see your, your business fluctuating a lot? Like from when you started a couple of years ago throughout 2020 and now into 2021? Hmm. Well, it's interesting because the pandemic is somewhat similar to when I started my blog. It was the birth of my, in 2008, I was working in the mortgage business and that market crash and everything that resulted from that was the year I became a mom. And so it was really interesting that that was when my mommy style was born. And then through the pandemic and this economic change is when call me CEO was born. And so I don't know, I feel like moments like this are really good for reflection and to think about the way your time is spent. And for me, I've always wanted to take my pace according to my availability with my kids, because ultimately they are my number one. Um, My youngest is now in preschool three days a week. And so I felt like, man, I could really dig in a little, a little more and pivot this where I can hire more people to my team and help me produce more. So I don't know that my work hours have necessarily gone up a ton. They have, but I've also realized that the more I grow my team, the better off I am because I'm hiring people to do things that are better at doing that thing than I am. And so I've had some um, contractors that have been working with me now for six, seven years. And, but this year I've brought on, you know, six new ones. And so it's interesting. I, I, when people say, oh, you do it all. I'm like, no, I just, I just do bits of it. And then I have people that help, you know? So it's, it's been really interesting to open those doors for other people. And then also create a work lifestyle where I can do it for a few hours a day and be ready when my kids come home to be mom, you know, Mm -hmm. and some days are more work heavy than others, but I feel like my kids know that I am their priority. And you know, I have, that's a balance and check all the time too. So it's, it's been an interesting twist and turn, but at the end of the day, I'm really grateful because the pandemic really gave me a lot of time to think about how I wanted to pivot and where I wanted to spend my time. And that's, that was the birth of the podcast. And then ultimately my course. Yes which you are very, very passionate about. And, and it's a very unique thing, um, and that you're doing. And I, and I hope that we all, um, you know, join on board with your, with your followers, um, at call me CEO and also my mommy style. And hopefully you'll get everything under one umbrella. So under one website, so (laughs) that we can, we can, we can sort of bring you all in together, all the Camille's from, all your different paths of life. So that is, that's super exciting. So tell me one thing that you want to do when the, when we, where, where do you want to go? Where, where would you like to go when the world opens back up with your kids or with your husband? Where would you want to go? Oh, that's easy to answer because my husband and I had an entirely paid for trip to Europe, uh, to celebrate our 15 year anniversary, which we are now at 16 and a half. (laughs) So 
that was really, we always said when we hit our 15 year anniversary, we're going because my husband served an LDS mission in Belgium and France. So he speaks French and I've never been over there with him. And so we had, it was part land time, part cruise. And I don't know that I'd go on a cruise ship for a long time, just with everything happening right now, but I would love to get back to Europe and really spend some time there, you know, biking and enjoying all the areas that he spent a few years of his life in. And I feel like the, the Parisian people would be nice to us because he speaks French. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, we've been really looking forward to that, but it could be, you know, probably not this summer, but the next. The so next we're just, summer, yeah, it we're kind of just, it might be our 20th anniversary that we go. Who knows? Nope. Sooner than that. It's going to be sooner uh, than that. I hope so. Yeah. But, but with your kids, like, where do you guys want to go around here or when you're, I always say, take a micro vacation in your backyard. Oh yeah, we do that. So this last summer, I think we probably went to six different national parks. We live in Utah, so there's a lot available to us. Gorgeous. Yeah, we went to Zion and um, we went to Bryce Canyon. We went to Beaver. We went to Moab. Like there's so much here, Park City. So I feel like this year we'll probably be camping again, you know, and really enjoying the time outside with our kids. Their age is almost five to 12. And so camping isn't, it isn't easy, but it's totally doable it's where doable. when the, I had babies, I was like, no way no it's way too hard. It <laughs> so it is absolutely. Well, I, I just, I just love visiting with you today. I hope this stellar girl speaking stellar girl is, is something that, um, will, will, will resonate with, with, within your life as well. And I am so, so excited to talk to you and continue to talk to you, um, when we catch up at a later date. And, but I want to thank you so much for joining me today. And I hope that our listeners, and I know that our listeners will, um, really feel inspired and, you know, turn their, maybe their mortgage or their finance job into something that they're more passionate about as you did. And I want really want to thank you for joining us today. Oh, thank you, Terry. It's been such a pleasure. I've loved being here and I can't wait to keep talking and seeing where we go. Bye for now. Thanks for tuning in to today's episode. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit that bell icon to be notified of new episodes. To learn more about the Stellar Girl movement, please visit us at StellarGirl.com.